In this video, we're going to work on application exercise eight, where we work with IMDB data and web scraping from IMDB. So let's go ahead and fire up that application exercise. All right, let's see what we have here. We have four files in our files pane, aside from our history and the, our project file that we usually have. And these have the suffix .r as opposed to .rmd. The first one is more of a fill in the blanks exercise of the exercise we went through in the video. So these are the uh, this is some skeleton code to walk you through scraping the list of top 250 movies from the IMDb list. So if you would like, uh, you can uh, kind of go through this uh, having watched the video and give yourselves um, kind of a challenge of trying to recreate what we did in the video. And then if you want to check your answers, you can go to the same file name with dash complete at the end and the complete code from the video is there. And I'd like to walk you through a few things in terms of how we use these files um, so that when you are interacting with them, you have, uh, you're accustomed to this uh, different workflow than we've seen before. Before. So these are our scripts as opposed to our markdown files, which means that your prose is not here anymore and neither is the output or the plots, right? So what we have here is simply the code. It has some familiar structure. I mean, the code obviously looks familiar, but also we're using hashtags to comment on our code. So even though in our scripts, we don't really have the prose, we still want to have some, um, information in there in terms of um you know what the code is doing so using some comments is really helpful to separate your code out and how do we run the code from here you have a few options you can put your cursor on a line and it could be anywhere on the line at the end of the line it could be or at the beginning or you know somewhere in the middle and you can hit the run button on top and that basically will run your code in the console so that's one way of doing it. You can alternatively um, put your cursor again anywhere on the line um, and do command and then return. And that will also run the code in your console as well. And that keyboard shortcut might be a bit different depending on your operating system. But basically, there's a keyboard shortcut for doing that as well. Other options, if you want to run multiple lines of code at a time, you might want to highlight all of it. And then you can hit run again. So that's one option. Or let's go ahead and clear our workspace uh, just so you can see what's happening. So I again have this code highlighted and I'm going to again do command and then return or command enter. And I can see that that object is being recreated again. So these are your options for doing that. A lot of the time you're going to see me not uh, specifically clicking on the run button here, but instead placing my um, uh, my cursor on the line where I want to run the code and then hitting uh, command enter. Another thing I should say, again, this is structural, we'll get to the code in a second, but this is structural, is that I can put my cursor uh, on any line and if that line incorporates like a multi-line statement, so a pipeline, I can go ahead and just do uh, command enter or click uh, run and you can see that all three of those lines ran and actually I scraped the data for the titles here All right So uh, when you're working with these pipes because at the end of the line that code has not finished This would be the same with running a multi-line ggplot2 code as well If you hit run on any of the lines associated with it, it could be the first line It could be some random line in the middle it will actually run the whole thing for you, which is kind of neat, which means you don't have to constantly be selecting things. All right, so I'm not going to spend more time on the IMDb 250 movies since we already went through that example in the videos, but I would encourage you to go through it yourself. What I will spend time on is the other example, which is the TV shows example. Uh, so we're looking at uh, scraping the list of most popular TV shows from this address so let's go ahead and in my browser i'm going to open that up on imdb so this is the tv meter um so it's looking at popularity of tv shows okay um number one is the haunting of Bly manor number two is the boys so on and so forth so we have 100 titles here so this is what we want to scrape so let's go ahead and take a look at our um, script where we can do some fill in the blanks, okay? 
I'm going to uh, load the tidyverse and the harvest packages. And the first thing we want to do is using the read underscore HTML function, we want to read the whole page where we're going to scrape the data from. So this is a character string, and that's simply going to be the URL. So I can go ahead and copy the URL and paste it into my code. And let's go ahead and run that. And as a result, I have a, you know what, I'm going to clear my workspace because it had uh, data from the previous example. And I just want to, uh, we are overwriting it, but just to make it not confusing. So right now, my environment is empty, and I'm going to go ahead and run this line of code on line 10. And I can see that in my environment, I have now a list of two, this object called page, that's that um, XML document object that we get when we get the entire page source code. You can actually, if you want, uh, take a look at that in the viewer as well. It's going to be hard to parse through, but when we introduced HTML, we said each page has a head and a body. So you can actually start kind of, if you like, going through it. Although uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use our harvest functions to actually go um, sort, help us sort through this um, as opposed to having to look through this object one by one but it is there to be inspected. So the next thing we want to do is we want to get the years, it seems like. So let's go to the page and the years are here. So I'm going to open the selector gadget. Okay, uh, well, if I select this, I am seeing that uh, I'm getting the years, but I'm also getting these like plus one, my uh, plus or up six, down two type of stuff. I guess this list changes because it's like based on popularity. So I guess Emily in Paris was recently two levels up and now it went down. So I don't want those. So I'm going to unselect them. So now I have the year selected in the parentheses and I can see in my selector gadget that um, there are actually 100 elements selected, which is exactly what I want. Okay, so the, um, the selector for that is A plus and then dot secondary info. So let's go ahead and copy that and bring that into R. So these are the nodes that we want. And what I'm going to do here is I have this structure, but I don't have everything sorted out yet. So let's see what it wants us to do. I'm going to go ahead. I know I have page already saved and I know that I'm comf I think I am happy with my uh, second line of code, which is getting the nodes out. So I'm going to highlight just those, not the pipe operator at the end, not the assignment to years. And I'm going to go ahead and run it. As a result, I am getting some node set, but the information I want is in there. So let's go ahead and also tag on HTML text to it. And that is looking good. So that is actually what I want. But again, just like the other example, my years are in parentheses and I don't want that. So remember we can use the str remove function to get rid of parentheses. So if I try this to see if I can get rid of the open parenthesis, doesn't work. I get an error, something about incorrectly nested parentheses, because what it's telling me is that you opened a parenthesis, but you never closed it. Because remember, this is a special character that I need to escape. So let's go ahead and escape that. And now I've gotten rid of the um, parentheses at the beginning. And I can do the same thing for the uh, close parenthesis as well. And I'm again selecting everything except for the assignment to years. Now I like what I see. Um, and let's go ahead and run the whole thing. So this is assigned to years. And I can see that years is an object that's saved of length 100. Sounds good, but it's character. Why? Because what we scraped out when we uh, said get the text out of these nodes, it gave us a character. So I need to do one more thing in my pipeline and I need to make them numeric. And so now years is a numeric variable, length 100 I can see in my environment and then the years that I want. I can also print it out for good measures just to see what that looks like here. 
And if you want, you can do a little bit of a spot checking, right? So I can go back to IMDb and say, okay, the first one was 2020, second one was 2019, the third one was 2018. 2020, 2019, 2018. I think this is looking good. All right. The next thing is going to be the scores or the ratings. So let's go ahead and clear the selector gadget. And this time I'm going to try to get the scores. Uh, let's see. I have them all selected. Well, okay. So here's what I'm seeing. Um, I can see that only 98 things are selected, but... I suppose that's okay because there's really only 98 scores here for some of the shows, The Flight Attendant and The Stand, there is no score. So then we actually only have 98 scores selected. So let's go ahead and, and that selector tag was strong. All right, so we're going to say I want um, from the page. I'm gonna copy some of my code from before. I want something like this to continue. We want this to be strong. And let's go ahead and do this. And now we have the data we need. And then we want this to be numeric. And indeed we have them as numeric. So something important to keep in mind though is that this is only of length 98 and we are missing two of the, um, we're missing two of the uh, movies. So what we're going to want to do is we're gonna need to be a little bit smart about how we're doing things here. So let's go ahead and leave a note for ourselves. Um, scores available, whoops. For 98 uh, uh, TV shows, not movies. Only, uh, and then which ones are the ones with the non existence ones? The stand, which is at rank 90, not 49. And then the other one is the flight attendant at 65. Rank 65, flight attendant. So these are the missing ones. I'm going to have to deal with those. All right, let's go to the names of the shows, okay? Let's go to the names. So I'm going to clear uh, the selector again. Let's try to select just the name. And let's see what is going on here. When I try to select that, so many things are selected and I have like 328. And this says A here. I think it's selecting everything that's clickable. So let's go ahead and try to unselect some things. Now we're down to 205. I'm gonna keep scrolling down to see how I can get out of this rut. Do, 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 do. Not seeing anything else selected. Nope, I don't want that. Let's clear that. I'm going to try this again. All right, let's try one more time. It seems to be a little bit hard to get just the names. What if we do this? You know what? If I do this, I can get the names. I get other stuff too. Well, maybe I'm just going to have to live with that situation and clean it up afterwards because there didn't seem to be an easy way to only get what I want. So that's title column. So let's go ahead and work with that. You can see that this can get, uh, this is kind of an unexpected thing that's happening, but this can happen. So we're going to start with page and then we'll say the HTML nodes we want are dot title column and then HTML text. Let's see what that gets me, just these three, and see how much cleanup I need to do. Okay, 
So I have 100 things. I have names of movies and I have their years and their ranks and these uh, slash ends are basically line breaks. So I have a lot going on here, but what I want is in there as well. So one of the things I want to do is there's all these kind of white space, right? So there's all this white space. So I want to get rid of that. Um, so let's go ahead and go to the help for string R. Because that's the uh, web, uh, package that we're using. And I'm going to click on reference for string manipulation. And let's take a look to see white space. Here we go. We have some uh, options for working with white space, str trim versus str squish. str trim removes white space from start and end of string. str squish also reduces repeated white space inside a string. Okay, there's a lot of repeated white spaces inside a string. Maybe we want to remove those potentially. Um, maybe we want to get rid of those dash uh, slash ends first. How about we get rid of those first? I, we know how to do that. That's str remove and it is going to be slash n um, that got rid of one of them, the one at the beginning. So another function I can use is str remove all to say if you see repeated occurrences of the same thing, get rid of that. So now those slash ends are gone. Now let's do that squish thingy, str squish. Okay, this is looking good. We have the names. We have a bunch of other stuff as well, but we do have the names. So what might I want to do from here? Basically, I want everything up to the open parentheses, right? But I don't want the rest of that information because it's kind of like the rank, how much it changed by right next to it in parentheses, the year, I already have that information. So I need a way to uh, kind of split this thing up. Um, I'm gonna hold off on that. So if I want to split um, this sort of information out, I have an option for doing that uh, using the separate function in tidyr, but then I need everything to be in a data frame. But I can say if in a column I have some um, character string, so that would be the titles, split it at a particular character string, so that would be the open parenthesis, and then I could basically discard the second half. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and put this in a data frame and do that. But we still need to wor worry about these scores. So I need a way of getting the scores attached to the name because what I did earlier with the NAs did not really work. Let's try this one more time. If I do this and do this, this is the entire table, I suppose. And let's take a look at what we're seeing here. It selects 500 things for me, um, which is five columns probably times 100. So what happens if I just read this TD uh, tag? Go back to our studio and give that a try. So we know that uh, we need to do something about these scores. So I'm going to uh, go back here and see if I can get the scores as I want them. So page, HTML, I guess that's a single node maybe. Okay, so that gives me basically a, um, no, nodes is what I want. Okay, that gives me basically everything I want. So from in here, uh, let's go ahead and maybe say HTML text. Okay, that did give me the text of everything I want. Um, so here are the ratings associated with each of the, um, with each of the um, TV shows. Let's do a str remove of 
slash n oh sorry str remove all to get rid of all of them and then let's do a squish okay if i do an str squish the thing is these are all 500 of them all next to each other um let's go back to harvest and see if there's a better way of doing this reference so parse an HTML table into a data frame. How about that? Parse an HTML table into a data frame where X is the node or the node set document. So what I might do is um, I'll take a note here. Alternate approach um, gives vector of 500. So that's something we tried. And then let's try another alternate approach. um scrape entire table so we start with the page again but this time we want html whoops table uh, is that called td no i don't think that particular table is called td so we need to figure out what is this table called? What I might be able to do is let's close out of, um, well, let's clear this one more time. And then try to select, nope, not you. We want the contents of the table, of the entire table, but we don't want that. So that's TD. about this db rating about this imdb rating is that what we tried before aha uh -huh. we got it so what we needed was to be able to get just the, let's close out of this help file now, um, just the column of IMDB ratings. And you know, the way we got to it is, was ultimately by clicking around. So if I just select the IMDB rating, that actually selects the cases where I have the NAs as well, because that's in yellow now. Before, let me go back and show you what we had before when we were selecting only the numbers that were strong, so bolded numbers. It wasn't selecting that because we weren't selecting the whole uh, text. But if I actually say, let's clear this again and say, I only want this column IMDB rating, I'm actually able to get that. So all I did was to pop IMDB rating into here into the html nodes for my original approach so i'm going to go back and actually delete my alternate approach and i actually have if i save the scores i have indeed 100 numeric values and i can actually get rid of my note for myself as well okay so we managed to do this and what we're going to do next, uh, we still needed to do something about the names, didn't we? And we said we're going to do that once we put things into a data frame. So at this point, what I would do is I've tried out a bunch of things. I would select all of my code up to this point, and kind of run it again, rescrape, uh, make sure that the code I have is what I'm working with. And we are going to now create a new data frame called TV shows. It's going to have four columns. The first one it looks like is rank and then the numbers one through 100. And then we want title or yeah, we can call it title or we can call it name of the show, I suppose. And this is the names uh, vector that we created, uh, the year of the show. This is the years vector that we created. 
And then we have scores of the, no, the score of each show is the scores um, vector that we created. We don't have another one, so we can get rid of. That's all we got. But let's go ahead and create this and let's take a look at this data frame we have called TV shows. Okay. Um, I think it's just trying to run the rest of my code for a second. So that's why I was, um, I really only want this code to run. There we go. So I have the information, except in the title column, I still have this extraneous information that I don't want. So I want to do things, split them at that open parenthesis. So let me show you guys one more function. Um, this is in the tidr package called separate. Separate. Here we go. So what it does is it separates a character column into multiple columns, um, and we can separate it based on a particular um, character that we say. So we give it the data frame, the column we want to separate, and into what we want to separate it to. And then the, uh, the character string that we want to use to separate the column. So what I'm going to say here is for IMDB TV shows, we are going to um, separate the name column. So the column we want to separate is name into um, name and other info, let's say. And then we want to separate at open parenthesis, but I'm going to say that um, this is going to be, um, it's a uh, special character, so I'm going to escape that. Let's see what that looks like. So in de indeed, what it did is it did do the separation, and in other info, it did do a separation for me. And then there are some additional pieces discarded. Oh, because we had multiple open, um, we had multiple open parentheses. So when you say split it at the open parentheses, then it doesn't know what to do with the other pieces. I think there's an argument for that here. So the extras, we can say either drop them or you can merge them. So only splits at most, um, uh, so into two pieces basically. So let's say, let's merge them just so we can see it all in one place. Extra merge, oops. All right, so other info now has all of the other stuff we don't want. What do you think I'm going to do? First of all, I'm going to get rid of other info. So that's one way of deleting that stuff. And then now you can see that uh, when we did this separate, uh, we ended up with this additional space at the end of our name. So we might have two ways of dealing with that. We can use the str trim, or maybe when we said uh, separate here, we could say separate at space followed by open parenthesis. So what happens if we run that? In fact, I think that gets us what we want. It gets rid of the um, rid of the uh, empty space at the end. So this is basically our new uh, TV shows data frame with the information that we want. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Rank, name, year, and score. All right. And in fact, we should have in some of the scores, what was it, row 49? The stand has the NA. And then it was something like 65, the flight attendant has the NA as well. So everything is working fine. So we're done with scraping the data. It took a while because there was some unexpected stuff happening, but that's exactly what can happen when you're uh, doing this sort of web scraping. And I'll be very honest, I didn't expect that to happen because when I set up the exercise, there wasn't missingness in the data, I believe. Um, 
or maybe I wasn't being careful, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure there wasn't. But today there is, and that's perfectly fine, but we had to work our way around it. It did take more time, that's true, it was a bit more tedious, but there is a way to work around it. So the rest of the exercise is telling us to do one more thing. It says, let's add some new uh, variables. So now we basically have uh, some new variables in our data frame called genre, runtime, and end episode. So the reason why we wanted to do this is we want you to start thinking about what could we do next with web scraping. So it says add info for the first show. So let's go and take a look at what our first show is. I'm going to get rid of this. Uh, and it's called the haunting of by haunting of Bly Manor. I keep wanting to say fly manor. Okay. Uh, we want its genre. Its genre is drama, horror, and mystery. So let's go ahead and put that there. Drama, horror, and mystery. Runtime. Let's do runtime. 449 minutes. For the entire series, maybe it's a mini series. A number of episodes. Looking for the word episode. Oh, here we go. Nine episodes. It has nine episodes. So let's go ahead and add these on. So what I've done here is I'm adding uh, values to specific cells in my data frame. So the first cell in the genre column, the first cell in the runtime column, and the first cell in the end episode column. And I can take a look over here and there we go. So we have all of this information here. So if I wanted to populate every single one of these rows, what I would need to do, so let's go and do just one more. I could go to the boys, right? So I could say, um, let's go back to the main page, click on the link for the boys, and again, do, uh, for now, we're just doing that manually, take a look at the um, screen to see the relevant information. So this is action, comedy, and crime can see that this is going to get pretty tedious to get through every single one of these, right? Action, comedy, and crime. And then for runtime, now I kind of know where that information is, right? I need to scroll down a little bit to find the runtime. 60 minutes. I think this is probably not for the, all of the episodes, but just per episode. And the number of episodes was at the very top, I think. 17 episodes at least so far so on and so forth we could keep going but you can see that the actions we're taking are actually quite repetitive right click on a link go to specific pieces on the web page grab the information plop it into the data frame so next up what we're going to talk about is how can we automate this how can we actually grab those URLs, not just the titles, but actually the URLs underneath that we're clicking on, store those, make a list of them, and then write a function that will visit each one of those pace, uh, pages and grab the relevant pieces for us. So I hope that this was a good lesson and what do we do when we get into unexpected things? And you could basically see me struggle along with that as well because some unexpected things came up. I know in a lot of these videos, I kind of know what's coming up. So I prepare them for you for a more pleasant experience, but it's nice to have this uh, realistic experience as well so that you can see, okay, if we run into such a rut, what are some ways of getting out of it? And you could see also that one of the things I thought about was I want to do this type of operation. I want to get rid of spaces in a character string. I should go take a look at the string R uh, package. Obviously, I could have just Googled these as well. And that's an absolutely valid approach. But given that we're familiar with some of the packages, sometimes just starting off by going to their reference pages to see, can I just figure out what I want if it's here? And if it is, that might be a quick fix. And sometimes that won't be good enough either because the package doesn't have that functionality. The documentation isn't clear enough that that's what it does, or you're simply not searching with the right words and Google's search engine might help you a little bit more than you looking around the uh, site. But it is a good first step before kind of 
doing a much bigger Google search to see what you should be doing next.